Hey guys, it's me, Tantocles. This is a complete guide to Sprig, one of the coolest and most underappreciated characters in Chrono Cross. From what I've seen, she rarely makes it into anyone's final party, which is criminal. However, she has some really interesting abilities, and there are definitely some pros and cons to using her. The pros, she can transform into myriad enemies in the game, which can trivialize content because of the strength of the monsters. Trapping monsters with her is the only way to beat the Grand Slam, and that can get you some awesome items and help you to recruit Janice. She can also help you trap rare elements for your team using Couscous. And finally, she can transform and change her innate element color to resist enemies enemy attacks or do more damage. The cons, she does require special setup. She requires some setup before battle where you have to trap monsters, and she has to waste turns to set up her doppelgang ability before she can do damage with her special transformations. Also, her full potential can only be reached during a new game plus. With a couple of exceptions, her transformations have only one element color available to them for casting. Now, this guide will take you through every step you need to make Sprig supremely powerful. If you've made it this far, please subscribe to my channel and glide hook the like button. It's free and it really helps my channel. So let's start by talking about how Sprig works. Sprig's weapon type is the staff, but she has a pretty mediocre strength stat. Sprig's level 5 tech is Doppelgang, which allows her to transform into any monster that she has captured. It's her only tech, and I'm going to talk specifically about it more in the next section. Her element grid is mediocre. She only gets level 5 elements and higher, and she gets very few of them. Interestingly though, the Chrono Cross developers gave her a good magic stat, and she's great to use Tornado on both for damage and for reasons I'll explain in the Doppelgang section. Now let's talk about the mechanics of Sprig's Doppelgang. Doppelgang is Sprig's level 5 tech, which allows her to transform into enemies. A couple of interesting things happen when she transforms. First, Sprig's stamina immediately goes to zero. So cast this when Sprig is at low stamina to immediately restore some of her stamina. Remember, you lose 7 stamina whenever you cast an element, and your stamina can go negative when you cast an element. So if Sprig casts Doppelgang and goes to negative 6 stamina, she'll immediately restore 6 stamina and go to 0. She also takes the stats of the monster she transforms into, with the exception of her HP stat. And her element grid becomes the enemy's element grid, and she loses all of the elements she had equipped for the battle, unless she transforms back. She keeps Doppelgang as a level 1 tech after she transforms, and she can transform as many times during a battle as she wants. However, if she's already used elements in a particular form once, she cannot use them again. It doesn't matter if she transforms back to that monster again or to her main form again. Still just one use per element. Editing Tantocles here. I was wrong about that. I actually retested that with this airframe. As it turns out, if you transform into a monster and use an element or tech, then transform to another monster and back again, the element gets refreshed. So basically, infinite Vagora if you want to use Spearfisher, and infinite level 6 elements if you want to use Tragedy Anne. I could have just edited that out, but I thought you guys might appreciate that I was being a little bit of a noob. 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 <laughs> and here's the final catch. Now you shall perish! To get new monsters to transform into, you must kill those monsters. However, you have to kill them with Sprig, and she cannot be transformed. She must deal the final blow. However, I've seen a lot of misinformation on this. Until recently, even I thought that she had to deal that final blow with a physical attack. She doesn't. She can kill the enemy with a physical attack or with magic. But again, she cannot be transformed. Now, if you don't feel like killing monsters with Sprig, you have one more alternative. Your characters can equip the Forget-Me-Not pot, which is located in Chronopolis. If they have this item equipped, they can deal the final blow to capture a monster for Sprig's arsenal. This is extremely convenient if you don't want to have Sprig in your party, but still want to capture monsters. Now let's talk about Sprig's ideal equipment. There are two builds for Sprig that you should consider. The first is a capture build. Remember, you can capture enemies with either physical or magic attacks. Now, if you want to make a physical build, here's the equipment you'll need. A powerful staff. A stone staff will do the trick, but stronger is better. So if you have access to the rainbow weapons, that's of course ideal. You also want her to have the strongest armor possible. Sprig needs some staying power for this kind of build because she may have to take a hit or two. You want to go full offense for Sprig's accessories so that she can kill things fast. For physical, there are a bunch of items that are great for physical Sprig, and I'll list them from best to worst. If you don't have something higher on the list, feel free to replace it with something lower down. Number one, sunglasses. These increase your damage by 25%. You fight the Cryosphinx to get this, and I'll probably have another guide on that later. Number two, Power Seal. 
This increases your attack by 5 points. You can steal them from Tyranno and Gaia's Naval. Number 3, Dragoon's Glory. This increases magic and strength by 3 and also increases your hit percent. You can get this from the chest in the basement of Viper Manor. It's arguably the best item for Sprig because it gets both of her stat lines. Number 4 is the Dragoon Gauntlet, which increases attack by 3 points. It's available in a few chests throughout the run. The fifth is Dragoon's Honor, which increases attack and magic by one and also increases accuracy. And finally, number six is the Power Glove. This increases attack by one. You can steal it from a bunch of different enemies. For a magical build, the Sunglasses are still the best, followed by the Magic Seal, which gives you magic plus five. Dragoon's Glory, of course, is still amazing. The Sky Jin Ring will give you magic plus two. Dragoon's Honor, as above, will give you magic plus one. And the Magic Ring will give you magic plus one as well. Now, the second build is a transformation build. If Sprig is going to transform, all that matters is HP. Her armor and her weapon do not matter. What I would recommend is that you equip earrings. Earrings will increase your maximum HP. You can equip the earring of hope or light or a gold earring. Those are all that you need. Even Sprig's armor and weapon don't matter if she's going to transform. For elements, Sprig can use the tornado element, and I would pretty much recommend that you have one to two tornadoes equipped on Sprig at all times. However, she has a great magic stat, so if you plan to kill something with Sprig to capture it, you can use the opposite color element of the innate of that enemy. Now let's talk about Sprig's best doppelgangs. First, for trapping elements. Again, I put a link to my trap video in the description, so head over to the timestamp for Couscous to see how to trap elements using Sprig and which enemies are the best for that. For combat, there are a few enemies that are amazing. The first is White Knight. Head to the Isle of the Damned in Homeworld and go into the back room. You have to lure a lantern down to the level near this night guy and then fight that lantern. After that, White Knight will reanimate and you'll immediately get into a battle with him and you can trap him. He has amazing physical stats and mediocre magical stats. Now you only get one chance to catch this monster, so make sure that you save before you fight it. Next is Spearfisher in the Underground Waterway. He has Vagora, an extremely useful spell that will temporarily stop stamina reduction. Production. Very useful if you miss this on your visit to Chronopolis. Airframe is next, and he's in the Isle of the Damned. He's on multiple screens there, so I don't think I need to illustrate any special strategy for you to find him. Lagoonate is next, and you start with this one. Sprig literally starts out completely broken. Now, in the Dead Sea, you can also find Tragedy Anne. These enemies have Volcano, Tornado, and Black Hole, all of which are extremely useful. Arrow Guard in Chronopolis is also extremely powerful and Yellowbelly in Earth Dragon Isle is great. And there are plenty of others that are amazing that you can capture throughout the game, so I won't list them all. But this next section has a spoiler for New Game Plus, so please skip ahead to the next timestamp if you want to figure it out for yourself. In New Game Plus, in the Bend of Time, you can fight Ozzy, Flea, and Slash from Chrono Trigger, and they are all very powerful. If you manage to capture Slash, he even has a powerful triple tech. So I would strongly suggest that during your new game plus, you try to capture these enemies. Okay, spoilers over. And finally, the Grand Slam. I made a companion video for the Grand Slam that I posted at the same time, so feel free to take a look at the description for a link to it. But essentially, you need to capture multiple monsters for Sprig to be able to beat Janus in the Grand Slam. And this is the only way to beat the Grand Slam. Janice is literally locked behind Sprig's doppelgang, which makes Sprig an extremely cool character. And that's all I have to say about Sprig. If there's something I missed, leave a comment and I will add it to the pinned comment in this video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.